Good afternoon, guys. I remember Stephen Covey saying in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, that we have an emotional bank account. And when I heard that term, it really changed the way I looked at everything that I said and felt. So he says that we have an emotional bank account, which means that we can make deposits in our own self-worth emotional bank account, but we can make deposits in other people's uh, emotional bank accounts. So we can choose to listen and try to understand people, even if we don't agree with what they're saying. That makes a deposit in their emotional bank account. And he says that we also make withdrawals when we decide to uh, not fully try to understand people, as an example. So we have this emotional bank account, and it's what fulfills us or takes away from our true great selves. So I just wanted to share that with you. Have a great afternoon, everyone. What does it take to be happy and give it you one word? Progress. Progress equals happiness. The secret to your success is to go all in and commit to your Michael Jordan level genius. Whatever you want to make better, you better make sure you measure it more often. Rise and shine, it's espresso time. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I am not a morning person. But when you start your day with a powerful routine that inspires you, like watching one of these videos, it can change your life. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee, know that I believe in you, and get ready for a shot of espresso from Tony Robbins. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. We yeah. live in a culture where most people are dabblers today because today, it, it, if you ask me, what does it take to be happy and give it you one word? Progress. Progress equals happiness. When you're making progress in your body, even if you're not there yet, you feel good. Yeah. You achieve your goal and you just sit around, you're not happy. We got to grow. We got to make progress. It's easy to make progress in the beginning of something. In the beginning of a relationship, who doesn't have a good time, right? right? In the beginning of starting a business, if you love what you're doing, of course you're gonna have a great time. In the beginning of anything, it's easy. A job, it's fun in the beginning, it's, it's novelty, it's new. Mastery is when you've worked, you know, in the beginning of learning a sport, how fast do you learn tennis? I mean, just like zooms up here. You didn't know anything, you thought love, you know, was an emotion, you find out it's a score, <laughs> you know? You go like this, but then you hit this plateau. And most people hit that plateau, they go, wrong job, right. wrong relationship, wrong business, because it's not instantly fulfilling them. Mm. But the people that go, I'm gonna fight through and go deep. I'm gonna find a way to break through. I'm gonna find a way to learn and know more about this any human alive so that I can help as many human beings as possible and they won't be bull because I've lived it. There is a power in mastery. And how many people do you know are really committed to mastery today? Most people dabble in a million things, they master nothing and they wonder why they're unfulfilled because mm. they're running for the sugar, the next thing that feels good instead of getting past what doesn't feel good and getting to where you own something. The secret to your success is to go all in and commit to your Michael Jordan level genius. See, I believe that everybody has Michael Jordan level genius. You are the best in the world at something. And it's not what you went to school for, not what your parents did, not what you grew up thinking about, but you are the best in the world at something. So the key to you winning is finding the thing that you have Michael Jordan level genius at and then going all in on it and using that to bring value to other people and build the business that you want. If you look at what I do, I love entrepreneurship. I love thought leadership. I love motivation. I love content that helps people believe in each other. Uh, and I love YouTube. And I love all those things. And what I've done is combine all of those into a business. <laughs> And it's led me to a lot of places that I never thought I would get to. I remember when Ed Milet and Andy Frisella flew me out to their event to speak at in Whistler. And you have to pay, I think, $50,000 to be as part of their private group. So some high level entrepreneurs, you know, seven, eight, nine figure entrepreneurs. And I was speaking in between David Goggins and Peyton Manning. You think of David Goggins being the most, you know, tough, hard <laughs> human alive, maybe. And Peyton Manning being maybe the greatest quarterback in the discussion of all time. And I was in between them. I got to go after Goggins and Peyton Manning's after me. It's like, what, what did I just get sandwiched in between? 
And I had a lot of insecurities, a lot of doubts, a lot of fears like, wow, I, I don't I don't belong in this group. Why am I on stage with you know these two guys? But then I realized, you know what, with the things that I'm doing, I, I am that. I, I am I am that good. Goggins and and Peyton Manning are not gonna get on and talk about YouTube strategies, marketing strategies, thought leadership strategies. They don't know anything about that stuff. But I'm I'm great at it. You know, it's what I do, it's what I'm the Peyton Manning of. And it still feels uncomfortable to even say that, but but it's true. That's my Michael Jordan level genius, and I've I've worked to master it. And the key thing is figuring out all of the things that you're that you love and you're great at, and combining them. That's how you have success. Committing to mastering those things. I think we get pulled into other people's versions of success and what other people want us to do. And you spend most of your life. Think about how much of your look at your week. Look at the past week, the past seven days of your life. How much of that time did you spend work on the thing that you're great at and you want to be great at? Like your Michael Jordan level, Peyton Manning level genius. How much time did you actually spend on that, on those things? Versus how much time you spend on things that you don't really care that much about and you were doing for other people because they have expectations of you. And the more you can start to flip it, to spend less time on the things that just other people expect of you and more time on the things that you actually want to get great at, that's when life starts to get really good. That's when you start to accomplish your goals. That's when you start to have more financial success. That's when you start to find more meaning and happiness and purpose in the work that you're doing. Okay, so how do you do it? Maybe it's great, motivational talk, awesome. How do you actually do it? What are the steps? Step number one, let's make a list of all the things that you love doing. What do you actually, like, what do you get lost in? I, I can make videos. I like making videos. I love entrepreneurship. I love thought leadership. I could talk for hours and hours and hours and never get bored. I, I can do a speaking gig and then spend five hours in the hallway and just lose track of time, forget that I have to go to the bathroom, be running a fever, not even notice it. Like, where do you lose track of time? But on other things, I hate, you know, we're going grocery shopping. Nina's gonna go grocery shopping. I'm gonna film videos in the car. I hate grocery shopping. No interest, like in, uh, 20 minutes of grocery shopping feels like 20 hours but 20 hours of helping entrepreneurs feels like 20 minutes. <laughs> so there's no right or wrong. There's right or wrong for you. What do you love? What can you get lost in? What can you do that you can spend five hours and it feels like five minutes went by? What are those things that happen consistently for you? That's step number one, right? What do you love? What can you get lost in? Step number two is, this is a big one. This is where so many people make a mistake. You hopefully have a few things on your list. It's not just one thing. There's a few things that that's what makes you special, makes you unique, makes you you. I'm not the only guy who cares about entrepreneurship, but when you combine entrepreneurship plus thought leadership plus believe plus YouTube, that makes me unique, right? That, that brings me into rooms that otherwise I wouldn't have gotten into. When you have that list of the different things you can do that you love doing, they often feel like they're disconnected. They often feel like they don't match up. And so we're thinking, okay, well, I could do this business or this business or this business or this business. Instead of thinking or, you think and. You don't have to pick one or the other, and you don't have to pick one business or another. You combine them. Not into 10 different businesses, but one business that does 10 things, or one business that does four things. You combine those interests of yours into one thing. That unique combination is gonna make you special. And people will either make the mistake of trying to launch four businesses at the same time, or just having to pick one thing. If you try to launch four different businesses, you have, say you have four interests, right? Four passions, four things you love doing. You launch four different businesses, you're gonna get just stuck in so much admin and headache and hassle and four different websites and social media accounts. It's just, it's a disaster. You end up getting nothing done. Or you pick one thing and focus on that and then you end up missing the other three because you love all four of them. The secret is to combine all four of them into one business that's never been seen before. That's your Michael Jordan level genius. Which brings us to step number three, how can you use those things to bring value to other people? If you're doing something just for yourself, then you've got a hobby and it could be really fulfilling hobby, it's a lot of fun, but ultimately a business doesn't happen until you're bringing value to other people, right? You make money by bringing value to other people. You wanna make money quickly, bring value quickly to other people. You wanna make a lot of money quickly, bring a lot of value quickly to other people. When you can figure those three things out, when you can make that list of all the things that you love doing, you get lost in, like it'd be so much fun to keep doing these things all day long instead of the, the job that you have or the life you've, you're living right now. When you can combine those things, 
So it's not just one or the other, one business or another, but combine them in a way that's uniquely you. And then three, use those things to bring value to other people. That's where you win. I bring value in what I do by making content. I can make money from advertising and sponsorships by making YouTube videos. I get paid to go speak on stages and deliver my message to entrepreneurs. I get paid to help people with their YouTube channels and grow them inside of thought leadership. Uh, I get paid to create books and advances on deals and royalties on sales that happen, right? You can get paid in a lot of different ways when you learn to bring value. Michael Jordan level genius, that's you. You need to find it. You need to then master it because the potential alone is not enough. You got to actually start doing something about it. And then in that combination of what you are great at, figuring out how you can help other people, serve other people and get paid to do it as well. That's where you win. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week? The sign says that when you just watch a video, you get motivated, you get inspired, you have a 35% chance of following through on your goals. 35%, that's not enough, that's not enough just to get motivated. Believe Nation, we're here, you're here. The today matters, you're an action taker. When you commit to a plan of action, of when and how you're gonna follow through. When you write it down, you have a 91% chance of following through. And when you commit publicly to somebody else, it jumps to 95% chance. From 30 something percent to 95% chance of you following through. Believe Nation, we need to make this happen. So question of the day, your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action specific for the next week. Put it down in the comments below and I'm gonna show on screen sometime next week to celebrate you. Also, if you wanna have more self-love, self-confidence, self-belief, I've designed a special free training to help you get it. The science is it can take up to 254 days of consecutive action to develop a new habit. And I want that for you. I want you to develop the habit of self-belief, self-confidence, self-love. So for the next 254 days, I'm gonna send you a link by email to an unlisted video to get on for free. It's in the description below. Go check it out. If you want to change your life, my friends, you got to change your physiology and you got to change your focus. My very first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I want to get my head right. I do this thing called priming. Today, what creates marketing is when you don't just market, but you add value to people. You know, I, I went through a divorce. I decided I, I met a woman and fell in love with her and fell in love with her kids. She'd been married twice before me. She was 12 years my senior. So I was 24 and had a 17 year old son instantly, an 11 year old, a five year old, and then one on the way. Really great lady, but we're completely different. No one tells you how to pick your partner. But I fell in love with the children, so I was like, I, I, I don't wanna lose these kids, you know? So I eventually decided to get a divorce. And when I got the divorce, it was a not happy divorce from the standpoint of I try to give her half of everything, but they got a 10 times, most, yeah, eight times and a 10 times multiple on all my companies. In those days, I didn't have 31, I had like seven. And they were small companies. They weren't billion dollar companies, they were like, Less than 100 million, most of them. Yeah. And some of them were only dependent upon me, like, like a doctor. If I don't show up, the whole thing falls apart. And so I'm looking at this. I got to pay her eight and 10 times. I got to pay her $50 million. I mean, I didn't have $50 million. So I settled on 42 million. I had to pay her $42 million when I didn't have it. And I started over at 39 years old. And I had to pay her not only $42 million, but I had to pay her a million dollars a year for 17 years. I was only married to her for 14 years, right? Wow. So I just paid that off a couple of years ago. And the reason I tell you the story is in the beginning, I had to pay her a million dollars a year, plus I had to pay the taxes on it before I ate. It was, and when I met her, she was broke. <laughs> now I was broke and that was the best in the world that I was doing. But the power of that was when I wouldn't let go, when I finally said, I'm gonna stop being angry, I'm just gonna automate it, let go my capacity grew tenfold. It's like, I never looked back. It was like, because I had to come up with an additional million dollars, I had to think bigger, I had to do things bigger. So I started creating new relationships, new partnerships, new businesses, and it made me grow to a $5 billion a year company, set of companies, versus not even, you know, a little more than 100 million back in those days. So in eight years, my life has transformed because I, I put that tax on myself and I invested heavily, and I didn't have the money to do it, but I did it anyway because I had to. Yeah, gotcha, that's golden. So actually let's talk about your companies and switch gears sure, a little absolutely. bit. I'd, I'd love to know around leadership and you know, to build you know, like collectively a $5 billion. Yeah. Like what kind of people do you need to have around you as, as a leader? What's interesting, in the early stages of me myself as an entrepreneur, I started all these companies from scratch 
And then I met a gentleman, the gentleman who started MTV, and we had this really cool conversation. He said, you know, Tony, it took me, you know, a decade and a half to really build up MTV. And he said, and then I built another company. And he said, Tony, you know what I realized? It takes like seven years, that was his number in his head, on average, to go from scratch to build something that's really stable and strong and so forth. You know, and he goes, I realized there are only so many seven year cycles in my body. And he said, but if I went to a company that already has been around for seven, 10, 20 years, and I bring my ability, my vision, my ability to grow that business, my ability to inspire the people, my ability to produce resourcefulness, then I get a multiplied effect. And he goes, Tony, you're the best in the world at what you do, but damn, you work your tail off. And so he asked me if I'd come speak. He, he, one of the companies he took over was Century 21 Real Estate. Yeah. And he said, why haven't you ever spoken for us? I said, because the, your company asked me over and over, but they're cheap. You know, they want to pay me $100,000 and my fee's a quarter of a million. He goes, oh, he goes, we'll pay the quarter of a million. I said, no, for you, I'll do it for free. Because he's a friend and I'm learning from him. So I came into the speech and afterwards he sat me back down. And he goes, Tony, there are 10,000 people here. He says, I know like all my financial guys, they, they all look to you, but you're like a rock star from middle America. These people in gold jackets selling real estate. He goes, do you know how much our business increased in those four months? And I don't remember the exact number. It was like 22 or 23% or something. He goes, do you know how much money you made me? And you got nothing. <laughs> he said, let me give you some advice. Go find people that have some form of momentum that you can turn around and get a piece of that. And that's how I changed. So what I looked for were businesses that I felt tremendous emotional connection to because I felt they touched people's lives in some way. And I looked for partners that were geniuses, but where I could bring my own genius to it, where one plus one equals five, or at least three, not two. And by doing that, I got pieces of these different companies, and then it just grew and grew and grew and grew. So I'm in virtual reality. I have a company called NextVR. My partners are geniuses, and we just locked down the exclusive for the NBA. So instead of Monday Night Football, we have Tuesday Night NBA, and you literally, it's like you're on the court, you can look, and feels like you can reach out and touch LeBron. It's mind boggling and there's no cords or computer. It's all done off your phone with an app. It's mind boggling. Wow. Um, we also have the, the exclusive for Live Nation for all concerts. So you can be right there next to Jay-Z or Beyonce like you feel like you can touch them, right? I have a company that's number one guy in stem cells in the world. I have a company that does genetics, you know, that's just genius. Um, I've got companies that are in the education space. I bought Adweek with a group of partners. I have my financial companies. So the diversity I have is mind boggling, but that's also the secret to investing. You know, if you've got all your eggs in one basket and there's a problem, you need to make sure you run your business really successful, give it your all, not start 20 of them. But once that business really is strong and your investments are strong, then you can build a second one. Most people, they build a business and then it's not going as well as I want, so I start another business because it feels more exciting. And it's like, you have one child you're not taking care of, so let's have a second child and a third child, and it just doesn't work. But the diversity of it also makes me excited. So I manage 12 of them actively. The others, I have such great partners. Like, you know, I own, uh, you know, uh, the Major League Soccer new franchise in LA. I'm a partner in that. Uh, it's called the LA Football Club. But my partner is Peter Guber, who owns the LA Dodgers and owns the Golden State Warriors and about as smart a human as you could ever have in the sports field. And then I bought um, uh, in the esports field, you know, it's mind boggling. People, we fill whole stadiums now with people watching people play video games. So I bought uh, Team Liquid, which with my partners with Peter and everyone else. And, and so, I mean, the opportunities are just amazing because I'm partnering with people who have skills that are the best in the world and I'm bringing mine. And when you combine them, you know, you get a greater impact. I see. I'm curious, um, when it comes to focus versus having multiple businesses, how do you know when you're ready to, to start to diversify? It's a great question. When I was 32, 33, maybe 34, somewhere in that range, I was really frustrated because I love what I do for a living. It's emotional rewards are gigantic, mm. but it's not a it's not a, a business that has a great deal of you know opportunity for maximizing profit because it's a low margin business. And I didn't get into it saying what's the best business to get in. It's just I'm an artist. I want to help people change their lives. This is my this is my mission. So you know we were in the nine ten percent margin and. It doesn't take much of a challenge when your margin's that small to have a real challenge in your business. So I called a group of billionaire friends of mine that I've coached over the years, and I, I always want to be the giver. I never asked for anything, but I said to them, look, I have these seven or eight opportunities that are being put in front of me that look incredible. I still want to run my core business, but I'd love to get your coaching. I've coached you guys. Would you be willing to coach me just for a couple hours? So I brought them all here in New York, had this incredible meeting. I'll never forget. 
And I decided I wanted to add value, so I introduced them to each other. They all knew of each other. They're all kings of the titans of business. Some, some were friends. And then I said, so let me share you the good, the bad, the ugly of my story. And so I told them my entrepreneurial story from the very beginning, no money, the ups and downs, the near-death experiences. And I was watching their eyes get this big because a lot of them, they didn't start businesses like that, right? Some of them started businesses by getting a billion dollar loan, one guy, right? He was able to do because it it's financial backing. And so I could see them getting more and more intense. And long story short, at the end, they're like, stop, stop, stop. You shouldn't do any of these opportunities. They're all wonderful opportunities. You gotta go back and maximize your business. You haven't maximized your business. And one of the guys had just been to one of my seminars, my Unleash the Power Within seminar, and he told me, came up to me and said, Tony, it's the most incredible thing I've ever done in my life. He goes, Tony, you work so hard. You're on stage 12, 14 hours a day. I don't know how you hold people's attention. People won't sit for a two hour movie, three hour movie, and you got people so, you're never gonna wanna do this when you're like 42. You know, because I was like 32. <laughs> Same guy, three weeks later, goes, you're not working hard enough on your business. I'm like, what the heck, right? And what it was, was they all reacted because they're used to a different type of business. And one of the guys afterwards says, hey, and I was near tears, because I walked in thinking I had the greatest business opportunities in the world, and I walked back feeling like I'm a piece of you know what, right? And one of the guys, a billionaire, says to me, he goes, hey, Tony, where are you staying? I said, I'm at the Four Seasons. He goes, oh, I'm staying there too, three blocks away. Can I walk with you? I want to get your advice on something. I thought, who, me, dumb F? I'm the one you want this advice from, right? And he says to me, I'll never forget, he goes, Tony, he owned Fruit of the Limb, underwear company. He goes, uh, I got an offer. They make me about a billion nine. So I got I, I to gotta decide, do I, do I sell the company? Do I build it up bigger and then sell it? Or do I keep it for my son? And I said, I said, Bill, I said, I love you to death. I said, you already know the answer. You just, you want me to confirm it for you. Let's be honest. I said, first of all, if you sell the company now and get a billion, eight, billion, nine more, it's not gonna change your life one iota. You have the planes, the cars, the homes, the, all that stuff, plenty of cash. It's not gonna change your life. But if you sell when the business is not at its peak, you'll resent yourself later on. You'll, you'll be mad because you're a guy that loves to maximize. He goes, oh, you're so right. And I said, keeping it for your son, he's five, right? Does he want to be the underwear king? I don't think so. I said, go build it a little bit more to the level you know it is and then sell it, right? And he goes, oh my God, it's so brilliant, so great. But what I got out of this conversation that changed my life was I hated it. I felt they didn't understand and they didn't understand a bunch. But I said, there's got to be some truth in there. And then I saw this uh, story about this guy who spent, I think it was 17 years looking for this Spanish galleon. His name uh, was Mel, I'm playing a last name, but it was very famous in the 1990s, 80s. And he literally made no money, found nothing. Like 16 years into it, he had to convince people to give him more money. One of his members of his crew died. It was the most brutal approach. How could you possibly keep going out there looking for treasure and not finding it for five years, not give it up, or 10, 16, I think he went 18 if I remember correctly. And he found a half a billion dollars of the gold. So I asked myself a question. I said, what would make a guy go 16, 17, 18 years with no evidence of success and keep doing it and convince people to give him money and keep going working seven day weeks? He'd have to believe something different than other people. What would he have to believe? And I thought first he'd have to believe the treasure's there. I didn't believe the treasure was in my business. So you didn't find it, right? Second, you'd have to believe I will find it. And third, to go that many years, you'd have to believe it's worth it. And I shifted those three beliefs in my business. And I, things like, once I committed completely to that business and nothing else, I grew that business like crazy and I ended up selling half that business for $200 million, the business that looked like it would never make anything. Yeah, wow. When I did that, I said, now I'm a successful entrepreneur. Now I'll take on some other companies because I'm not BSing myself. I've really built it. This idea you're going to go build nine companies, nice ego stroke, no way you can give them the focus that you need. But today, I can do more with my pinky than I used to be able to do work in 20 hour days because I know more people, I have more context, I have more strategy, I have more tools. And so you've got to make sure you maximize something and really make a real business. You want to know your real test? Could you sell the business tomorrow for a significant multiple? If not, don't start another business. Or get rid of this business, sell it and start something fresh. But most people are always looking for what's easier and it always looks easier. What you really want to do is maximize the business you're in. Emotion is it.
legs crossed, back straight, eyes closed, breathing in through our noses, and out through our mouths. Deep, long breaths. Feel that power of you controlling your breathing. Feel that power of you keeping your back straight and your eyes closed, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's slightly painful. That's your true power. That's your determination. So use that power here, now, and forever. And see in your mind today how you will do when that music goes on as we work in the gym of life. But you got to see it in your mind right now if you want to bring it out into the world. See yourself doing the best you can on all the stretches or exercises that we choose and do together here today, right here, right now, wherever we are. You were born to do that. You were born to use your determination to see in your mind what you want to create and then make real as you open your eyes and live your life. Good morning, Determination. How's everyone doing today? Another day in the gym of life, another chance to be better than we were last time. So here we go, Determination, here we go. Uh, when I say go, we're going to start jogging on the spot as we usually do. Uh, but for now, you can just start walking on the spot as we slowly warm up our bodies and get ready for another, another session here together, another moment, a few moments here together. When I say go, we'll start jogging on that spot. Ready, and go. Always focused on our breathing and how we can control it, no matter what we're doing, wherever we are in life, wherever we go, not just in the stretches or exercises we're doing, anytime we're using our bodies and our minds, Let's remember how we can always take control of that breathing. It's the same way we can take control of our minds, our thoughts, and therefore our feelings. It's hard work, but just like everything else, with hard work comes all the best things in life. So here we go. We're almost there with the jog, almost there. Feel your body, all the, all the things that are going on right now, your arms moving, your heart beating, your breathing, that's your presence, that's phenomenal, you are phenomenal, and stop, alright, walking on the spot, I'm just going to walk side to side here, since I have enough space, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, make sure you have enough space, as we work together here in the gym of life. The gym of life never ends, even though we may not be exactly where we want to be, at school, at work, wherever it is that we would see and be with all the people that we love and always look forward to being with. But we're here right now together in this moment, if you're watching this and you're doing this. So let's go everybody, here we go. Let's uh, roll the shoulders first, 10 forward, here we go, 
Again, doing the best shoulder rolls we've ever done. All the way to our ears and around. That's four, five. Let's do ten forward. Here we go. And backwards. Again, enjoying the process. Enjoying the effort that we're putting in right now to be our best in whatever we're doing. That's what matters. That's what matters. And that can always keep us in our greatest gift, our presence. You're here, you're watching, you're doing. You are living. You have everything you need. Here we go. All right, arm circles forward. Let's do 10 forward again. Again, thinking about our breathing. Deep, long breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And backwards, 10 arm circles backwards. Taking good air in and letting bad air out. Okay, hands on the hips, bend the knees, and side stretch. Five on each side. All right, let's do twist now. Keep your feet on the floor and just twist your body. Twist your hips. Again, just feeling the joy of moving your body. All right, okay, and let's do five push-ups. Try your best, here we go. Best five push-ups ever. All right, five sit-ups, everyone, here we go. Always doing your best. If you need to use your arms to lift up, for now, that's okay. Just keep going, don't give up. All right, let's do five squats, here we go. All the way down, all the way up. Arms straight up, looking straight ahead. Excellent, all right. Let's do six lunges. Three on each side. Keeping our back straight, our body straight, looking straight ahead. All right, good. And let's do 10 second plank. Bellies, knees off the ground. Feeling the joy of being able to become uncomfortable in order to one day be comfortable doing this. All right, and stand up again, everybody. And let's reach for the ceiling on our toes. Here we go. Or if you're outdoors, you're reaching for the sky. Again, feeling the joy of reaching, stretching, using those muscles in our body, all the parts of our body, to reach, to do better. All right, I actually touched the ceiling this time, here we go. Excellent, all right, and reaching now for your toes, straight knees. Hold it there for 10 seconds. Excellent, all right, good. And let's balance now. Grab one leg and balance. Really think about what you're doing. Find that point and then pull that leg up towards your bottom. Bend the other knee if you have to. Feel the power of you finding your balance in this moment right now. And switch. It's the same way you can find your balance in whatever you're doing. Keep thinking, keep trying different things. Then bend that knee if you have to, and pull your foot up towards your bottom, and you should feel a pull on the front of your leg, front of your thigh. All right, now let's hug our knee. Here we go. Once again, find that balance. Work for it. There we go. Bend that knee and lift or hug your knee fully. Give it a nice big hug. And switch, the other one now. Slowly come on up. Make sure you have plenty of space around you. Just in case you do lose your balance, you fall. 
you get right back up though. You know the truth, determination. We never give up. We get right back up and we keep going. No matter what. Alrighty. Okay, and let's uh, sit down and reach for our toes with straight knees. Here we go. Again, enjoying fully. Reaching for our toes. Just like we're reaching always in life. Striving to be better than we were yesterday, a minute ago, a second ago. That's pure happiness. That's the joy of learning. Infinite mind wealth. Okay, and let's go V-shape now. And reach for the floor. Here we go. As far away from your body as you can. Feeling certain muscles being stretched. Your ability to think about that. That's your awareness and that's your determination. The power to control your thoughts. To focus on your being right now. And switch. Reach for one side. Alrighty. And reach for the other side. Again, you're trying to touch your toes. If you don't, that's okay. Just reaching. Feeling the joy of going for it. Alright, and let's pull our feet together and gently push our knees down with our elbows. Here you go. Feeling the pull a little bit on the inner thighs, just a little bit, as we gently use our elbows to push our knee towards the ground. Okay, one leg forward, one leg back. Go as far back as you can, keep that knee on the ground though. And let's hold it there for 10 seconds. And switch to the side. Okay, and again, go as far back as you can, but keep your knee on the ground. A little bit limited with some space here, but we'll do our best, always do our best. That's what we got. Okay, and let's go into a cobra stretch. So, belly's on the ground, push the floor and look up at the ceiling or the sky, wherever you are, wherever you are, here we go. Hold it for 10 seconds. All right, good, everyone. Okay, and legs crossed, back straight, eyes closed. Once again, feeling that power to control our breathing, the way we control our mind and our thoughts. So right now, let's see ourselves doing the best we can when that music goes on. For me today, I'm going to play two songs. Again, feel free to listen to my songs or have your own playing. But whatever you do, pick two exercises or two stretches or two movements that are safe within the space you have. And for one song, the duration of one song, try to keep going in that one specific exercise activity. For me, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing planks, holding the plank position for as long as I can for the first song, hopefully the whole song. And for the second song, I'm going to see in my mind right now, holding side plank position for each side for the duration of that song. I'm going to see that in my mind right now. Right now, see in your mind what you want to make real. And that music goes on. See it with the full power that it's possible. See it with the full power of belief and intention, determination to do your best to make it happen. Here we go. Determination. It's all about belief. You gotta believe in yourself. Here we go. I believe I can do this. Let's see. 
What about you? What are you doing? Are you doing planks like me if you are? Let's go. The whole song. Listen to the words of this powerful song. Everything's about believing in yourself. Everything. It all begins there. You believe that you can do something. Do you believe that? No matter how long it takes. No matter how hard you gotta work. If you don't believe it, it'll never happen. Belief is the activating force, the key to unlocking the full power of our minds. And then we gotta determine to do it. Every go, everybody. Always believe. I miss and love your determination. I miss and love you all the time. But we are here right now together. We are united. Right now, working on holding a plank position maybe. I don't know what it is you're working on. You're doing a dance or something or an exercise. Keep moving. Keep going. Don't give up. Let's go. The whole song. We're doing this. The whole song. We're doing this. Evan's right. We gotta fix our mindset. Meaning, if we fix, correct our thoughts, and turn them into nothing but positivity and belief in ourselves, all the rest of the anxiety, mind health challenges, all those lying thoughts will just go away. But you gotta do it. You gotta do it. Determination. Only you can do it. Only you can believe in you. Actually, others, of course, can believe in you, but the only, the number one thing that will matter is whether you believe in yourself. You don't want to waste everyone else's belief in you. It'll all go away if you don't believe in yourself. We were born to do it. We were born to believe in ourselves. First and foremost, to love ourselves, no matter what. To know the truth of what others feel about us if they believe in us too. Almost there, almost there. Song's almost over. Let's go, determination. Let's go. Awesome work, awesome work, determination. All right, next song. Side planks for me. Here I go. Holding one side for half the song and maybe holding the other side for the other half. Listening to again powerful music, energy, words. Bob was right. One love. Bob Marley knew the truth. Just like you know the truth. We all know the truth. We're made of it. Of course. If we just take our minds when they're negative and they're anxious and stressed and fearing, when we take, if we took our minds, our thoughts, and just move them out of the way, all there is is love. <laughs> we are made of pure love, pure infinite intelligence. We get to work on our bodies, our minds all the time to be the true beings that we were born to be. Even if we feel like quitting, it's hard. It's hard to control our minds to get it out of the way. But we can do what we were born to do. Alright. Alright, let's go to the other side now. Here we go. Oh, love it. Feeling the sweat. All that old fluid leaving the body. Make room for some new good fluid. Here we go. Just like our New thoughts. We get rid of the old thoughts that don't serve us to make room for new good thoughts, positive thoughts that serve us to be who we were all born to be. Love. That's it. Simple. No hate. No anger. Those things are going to be there. We're going to feel it sometimes, but 
with our determination, we can determine love, not hate. Determination, not giving up. Happiness, not depression. Joy, not sadness. How's everyone doing? Hanging in there, keep going. We're almost done. Let's always be united together, just like we are right now, right here. Alright. I'm proud of my effort. How about you? How about you? How about you, determination? I'm proud of you. I love you. Here we are again, ending the way we begun today together, knowing the truth though, that nothing ever ends, nothing is ever over, determination was never over, never done, because we are an energy. take control of our breathing in this moment, the way we did our best today on all the exercises and stretches we did, that's the same way, same process we can use to make the best decisions, no, not decisions, determinations, positive choices, loving choices, peaceful, grateful, mind healthy, mind wealthy choices, determinations. We don't choose and lose. We determine and win. Just like we won again today, here, right now. Just like we're winning right here, right now. Just by being our presence, who we are. believing and truly knowing the absolute truth that can never be taken away from you by words, by actions of others, or any things, any negativity, any sort of losses, pain, suffering, lies that is taking place. Those are lies. That's not the truth of what we were all born to do and be. That's just the mind. The mind that has taken over, the collective mind, our individual minds, but we have the power. We have our determined nation. We have the power to separate our minds from who we really are. Love, that infinite energy that is responsible for all that you are, see, the universe. What else could create something so magnificent other than love? The power of love, the love that's in you and all of us. So let's just get our thoughts, our negativity, our anxieties, our stresses, when things don't go our way or as they should, get those thoughts out of the way. And feel the truth when all that has gone away. It's love. It's infinite intelligence. It's you. I love your determination. Another great time together. Take this with you. Take this energy the way you feel right now. Hopefully you feel better than you did when we started. And you won your morning. You won your mind. You won your life in this moment. And you can win it 
all the time, wherever you go today, whoever you're with, whatever you're doing, no matter what's going on, outside your mind, out in the world, this is a starting place aligned with this that can change everything. I love your determination. Have a great day, a great week, and always a great life. I'll see you next time. Welcome to Best Life 30, your 30 day journey to creating the best life possible for yourself. You can just watch this video or if you want to sign up for the whole series for free and get the bonus companion worksheets that go with each video, check the link in the description below. All right, so today is day eight and we're going to learn how you can develop more self love. The truth is you don't have anything to give that you don't have. So you have to keep your own self full. That's your job. I say to the, my girls all of the time that your real work is to figure out where your power base is and to work on the alignment of your personality, your gifts that you have to give with the real reason why you're here. That's, that's the number one thing you have to do, is to work on yourself and to fill yourself up and keep your cup full. Keep yourself full. Now, I used to be afraid of that. I used to be afraid, particularly from people who say, oh, she, she's so full of herself. Mm, she's so full <laughs> of herself. And now I embrace it. I, I, I consider it a compliment that I am full of myself. Because yeah. you only when you're full, I'm full, I'm overflowing. My cup runneth over. I have so much, I have so much to offer and so much to give. And I am not afraid of honoring myself. You know, it's miraculous when you think about it. First of all, for me, my father and mother never married. They had sex one time underneath an oak tree because she was wearing a poodle skirt in 1953. <laughs> and my dad, to this day says, I want to know what's under that skirt. That's what I want to know. <laughs> he wanted to know what was under the skirt. They didn't really have a relationship. She wanted one, but you know, he went under the skirt and then that was it. And one time under the oak tree, bam, Renaissance. Woman is born. <laughs> it happened there. That's why I know my life is bigger than that. My life has to be bigger, as yours is, bigger than a, moment, than a poodle skirt. It's much bigger. The design, the, the, the reason why I'm here is much bigger than, oh, I think I want to see what's under that. So the ability to, 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 to take care of that, to honor that, to honor yourself and that which is greater than yourself, that which cre was the reason for your being here, that, 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 there's no selflessness in that. Because only through that do you have the ability to offer yourself, your whole self, your full expression of who you are to the rest of the world. I mean, $1,000 a month, 300 pounds, just I can't do any of this stuff. Yeah. These people are better than me. Yeah. So the first thing is, that's the first big problem right there. Mm -hmm. First big problem is that you have put a lot of people above you. Yeah. Put no one above you. Yeah. No one. Whatever you, but if, if, if you believe in something. Say that again, say that again, because that's, you know, but you know, but the, the man, the people that make more money, the people that are better looking, the ones that are on social media and they're so good at this. I put God above me, besides that, there's no one better than me. Got it. You have to become an equal. Yeah. So this is how I look at it. If you're playing, and I talked about it at your conference, if you're playing Roger Federer, yeah. okay? Be, be, before you get on the court, with Roger Federer, he's the best of all time. Yeah. But you're also a professional tennis player, yep. man. Yep. You're forgetting your own resume. Yep. So once you get on the court, let's say it's a grand slam. Mm -hmm. It's five sets, hopefully, yep. if you can go the distance with this yep. guy. Yep. But before you even bounce the ball to serve it, you're down two sets. Because why? You look across and you're playing Roger Federer. Yeah. But guess what? 
you get a good shot on Roger Federer in the third set. And you realize, I can play with this but it's too late. Yeah. You gave up two sets before you got on the court. You gotta stop giving up two sets before the game begins. Yeah. And we do that already. We give up two sets before the game begins. I remember I had great angst every night before I went out because I was not able to be myself. My very first WrestleMania, the biggest show of the year, the Super Bowl, uh, of wrestling. It's not just all luck, is it? Well, this is Rocky that night, 20,000 fans started chanting, Rocky sucks. <laughs> it was a sobering moment, and that was the beginning of the end of my initial run in the WWE. A few weeks later, um, I tore a tendon in my knee, and uh, I was out for the rest of the summer. And I came to the realization before I went back that it wasn't me, personally, that they didn't like. It was that I wasn't being me. I wasn't being real. I wasn't being authentic. Who is this guy in wrestling who's smiling when he's getting beat? A few weeks later, I got a call from the WWE and I spoke to Vince McMahon. He said, when you come back, we could continue to shove you down people's throats or we could turn you heel because they want to boo you anyway. I said, I think it's a great idea. And I said, uh, before we get off the phone, I have one request. I said, when I come back and we go live, I just need two minutes live, me talking to the audience live, two minutes is all I'm asking. He said, okay, you got it. A couple of weeks later, I came back, we were on live TV. I grabbed the microphone, fans were already booing. They started chanting, Rocky sucks. In arenas across the country, I heard chants of Rocky sucks. I said, um, I may be a lot of things. Well, Rocky my be is a lot of things. But sucks isn't one of them. But sucks isn't one of them. In that moment, The Rock was born. And about a month later, I was the hottest heel in the company. And things were on fire. And the greatest lesson about that is be you, be yourself. Whether it's in entertainment, whether it's out in public, whether you're a celebrity or not, whatever. And the most powerful thing you can be is yourself. I've known that one of the most powerful affirmations you can use is I love and approve of myself. I love and approve of myself. And when you first say that, it's amazing what can come up and come to the surface. Lots of times when we begin to say that, all the negative messages come to the surface. And it's marvelous because that gives us an opportunity to know what's been in the way. You see, if you don't hear your negative messages, you don't know what's in your way. So when you start to do an affirmation like I love and approve of myself, you want to really pay attention to what the negative messages are. Because they're the ones that are in the way. And when you find a negative message, if you could write it down, it's wonderful because you want to think, I found a treasure. This is something that's really in my way and really creating a problem. <laughs> Remember, we get to choose the way we think and we can choose to change the way we think. It's always our choice. Now, what I'd like you to do right now is take out those little mirrors that you have. I know everybody has a little mirror. <laughs> okay, good. Now, let's see if you can look in your eyes without primping. <laughs> see if you can manage to do that. <laughs> I want you to look in your eyes, and I want you to say, I love you. I love and approve of you exactly as you are. Okay, now just begin to notice what you're feeling. Don't judge it, just notice. What are the feelings that are coming up? Are they feelings of joy? Do you feel you feel wonderful about yourself? 
Are they feelings of criticism or negativity? Don't judge them, just notice what's coming up. Acknowledge the negative message. Just acknowledge it, and you can always say, thank you for sharing. <laughs> and realize that the, th the negative messages that are coming up now are very much the things that are in the way of you loving yourself. Okay, what I want to do right now is let's do a, just a little bit of sharing. Okay, I want to know what sort of messages are coming up from you. Hmm? Yes. Fear. Who would be upset if you really loved yourself? Me. No, 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 no. no. It always goes back farther. Okay. Who would be upset if you really loved yourself? My parents. Your parents. Which one? Both of them? Yeah. Okay. Family. Most Both of them. Most of them. Well, what was the family family. message? Um, always judgmental, always, um... Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so you came from a enough. critical, judgmental, resentful family. Right. Okay, fine. So you're and a wonderful... Fearful. And fearful. Oh, boy, you really got it all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it just means that you have a little more to work on. You know, I really think that some of us are very young souls, and we come here, and it's like going to kindergarten. Life is really very simple. And some of us are much older souls, and we pick tougher tests, and it's more like going to graduate school. But, you know, you can do it. It's just that you've chosen perhaps a little more difficult things to overcome. But see, it's my belief that the main thing that we really come here to work on is loving ourselves in spite of what they say and in spite of what they do. And that's what we really need to do. So, okay, you've got things, you've got credit, you've got judgment, you've got criticism, you've got fear, probably a little guilt in there too. <laughs> okay, then you... you I, I like to always think of that we can go beyond our parents' limitations. You know, they had a limited way of looking at life, and you were a very good little child, so you learned what they taught you. See, a lot of us think that we're bad and we're not good enough and we're no good, but actually we're ideal, wonderful, loving little children, and we learn exactly what our parents teach us. Not always what they tell us to do, but we learn from them. And we learn exactly what they do, and we grow up doing the same thing. The world doesn't need another perfect person. The world needs you. And you're trying your best. You're doing what you can. And, you know, I think it's really important that you cut yourself a break and that you stop thinking that you have to be perfect. There are going to be days where you're an hour late to pick up your kid, and that's okay. There are going to be days when you can't get to every email and that's okay. There are gonna be days where you feel so underwater and that's okay. You'll get through it, you'll figure it out. And you've got to understand that it's not about being perfect. It's about just being you. And that means that you gotta be willing to start before you're ready. You gotta be willing to do what I do every damn day, which is show up in my rollers or start a live stream and disconnect myself or start it and be talking and not even know that I'm broadcasting. You've got to do that version in your life or you're not gonna get ahead, period. You already know the thing about love yourself and maybe in some ways you've never allowed that. You've never noticed the beautiful things you've done in your life. So you've never allowed yourself to love yourself. But at some point, You've got to recognize that there's a love that's beyond you and beyond me and beyond your actions, and that love is whatever brought us here alive today. Some would say it's God's will and God's love. Some people it's the randomness of the universe. Some people it's nature. Some people it's whatever. But there is something way beyond us, and there's a way to access that and a way to honor that. And the way to honor that is to recognize that you are unique about of seven billion people, no one is like you specifically. And at least take that as a moment of saying, okay, I'm meant to live my uniqueness. I'm, out, I'm supposed to love the things that make me odd and weird. I'm supposed to love the things that make me strong. I'm supposed to, I was made this way. So let me honor what's good about that. And what's not good about that, let me work on that. Let me set a schedule to get better at that so that I can not only honor what I've been given, but I can give something back too by getting better. And that aspect of doing that 
that brings in so much joy and so much strength in our life is love. Loving ourselves, loving the process. And of course, the greatest way to believe in ourselves is to love other people that they become so grateful for us that they give us some of that feedback. That, they, that, that there's so much appreciation and love and joy in the moment with others that you can't help but just feel that vibe that there's an emotional contagion. When other people around you are feeling loved and cared for and, and excited about life, it's hard not to rub off on you a little bit and you start to say, you know what? Life isn't so bad and you know what? I deserve to feel good here right now too. And you know what? You start getting some momentums, some wins. You integrate those wins. You get some feedback to get better. And all of a sudden you start to believe in yourself again. All of a sudden and you start to live the charge life. I love me. So the day that you decide to stop loving me, I'm not gonna love myself any less. I believe in me. If you stop believing in me, I'm not gonna believe in myself any less. If you believe that I'm irrelevant, that no one is checking for me, and that I don't mean anything to the world, because you think or believe that about me, it doesn't believe, it doesn't mean that I'm gonna believe it about myself. See, the day that you start living your life according to everybody else's opinion is the beginning of the end. Most of y'all, and it's fucked up, I see it every day, all day. Most of you guys don't actually know your self-worth. You don't know your self-value. So you're like a vulnerable little child and you're, you're shaking. And it's like, everybody loves me this week. So I love me this week. Next week, it drops. So now you're running around insecure, feeling self-conscious and not loving yourself, sad and depressed based on the feedback, the responses and the energy that the rest of the world is giving you. I wrote about this in my new book, which is coming. It's called Black Rose. It hasn't been released yet, but it's coming. I talk about the fact that fame is an addiction. Fame is one of the most unspoken addictions out there. So many celebrities and entertainers, athletes and public figures, they base their self-worth on their relevancy based on everybody in the world checking for them. And as soon as people stop checking for them, then they stop checking for themselves. Y'all don't love me no more. I'm not selling records. I'm not number one in the box office no more. I'm not making as much money as I used to make. Oh, shit. ain't nobody checking for me. So guess what? I'm not checking for myself. No one sees the value in me anymore. So I don't see the value in me anymore. Every time I go on Twitter, Facebook, they say I'm irrelevant. So I'm irrelevant to myself now. I ain't shit because you think that I ain't shit. No one loves me because you said no one loves me. I don't love me. The day that you allow the opinions of the outside world to dictate the way you feel about yourself, it is the beginning of the end of you living a blessed and self-loving, secure life. I can tell y'all right now that it is not the car that I drive or any of the jewelry that I own or the size of my house that defines my self-worth. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm hot when you don't think I'm hot. I'm amazing when you don't think I'm amazing. I love me even if you stop loving me. You can say the nastiest, meanest, evilest shit that you could ever conjure up. It will never change the way I feel about myself. I'm telling you, that's the way I live my life. That's how I feel about me. Most of y'all are on Twitter. You're desperate for likes. You're desperate for the, 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 the egotistical feeding frenzy. Feed my ego, feed, feed, feed. Like me, like me, because I don't like me. I'm telling y'all right now, the day that you allow the opinions of everybody on the outside world to define your day-to-day, -day, month to month, and year to year, it's the beginning of the end. Love yourself, believe in yourself.
Love yourself, believe in yourself, independent of the validation of the world. Have opinions and feelings about yourself, independent of the feedback. Why you gotta have somebody calling you beautiful every day in order for you to feel beautiful? Do you believe that you're beautiful? Or do you only believe you're beautiful when other people say that you're beautiful? I'm just asking. Self-love is the cure to self-hate. If you make it to the end of this video, I want you to write, self-love is the cure to self-hate. These are the type of qualities that I'm going and have been instilling in my daughter. There is no man that you could ever meet, Shayla, that can make you feel more amazing than what you're supposed to feel about yourself. Nobody wants to be alone, but if you show up empty as an empty shell, and you're expecting this man to fulfill you and fill you up with all of the love that doesn't exist, you're gonna be fucked up. Because as soon as he leaves, you're depleted, you're empty, and you have nothing left for yourself again. Never rely or depend on anybody to fulfill your heart. And if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you better get to know him. Because that's also a part of the process of self-love. You are supposed to love yourself independent of any feedback, comments, likes, shares, and any of all of this other social media sh Some of y'all are social media whores. What does that mean? I, 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 I ain't sh until people on my timeline tell me that I'm the sh I love me independent of anything that anybody could ever say. It has nothing to do with being arrogant or egotistical. It's just a matter of knowing and being aware of self-worth. I love you. If you make it to the end of this video, I want you to write, self-love is the cure to self-hate. Self-love is the cure to self-hate. And I hope you share this video because I want this video to spread all over the world. Send it to World Star Hip Hop. Send it to all of the blogs and the websites. Self-love is the cure to self-hate. Shaman Tyrese, spreading love always. Share, share, share. Click that share button. Spread love. Love circle. I love you. Always. You deserve to be loved even if.